Welcome to Marvelous Gamers. Today we are diving into a realm of nostalgia and action-packed adventures with top 50 retro beat-em-ups explored. This genre, a cornerstone of arcade and early console gaming, brought us some of the most iconic and unforgettable experiences, from the gritty streets of Double Dragon to the intergalactic battles in Alien vs Predator. Beat-em-up games have defined a generation of gaming. In this video, we'll journey through the pixelated brawls of classics like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, and Streets of Rage 2, reliving the excitement and challenge that these games offered. Whether it's the superhero antics in Captain America and the Avengers, or the fantastical realms of Dungeons and Dragons shadow over Mistara, each game on our list has left an indelible mark on gaming history. So grab your joystick, hit start, and let's take a trip down memory lane with the top 50 retro beat-em-ups that defined an era. Double Dragon from 1987 Double Dragon is a pioneering series in the beat-em-up video game genre. Developed by Technos Japan and debuting with its first arcade game in 1987, the series revolves around twin martial artists Billy and Jimmy Lee battling through hordes of rivals. The games are known for their pseudo 3D perspective, allowing players to move in four directions but maintain a left or right facing. Players engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, utilize melee weapons like baseball bats and throwing knives, and in some games, execute combo moves with a co-player. The series' impact was profound, inspiring numerous other beat-em-ups in the late 1980s and 1990s. Various adaptations, including a 1993 animated series and a 1994 film were less favorably received. The franchise, now owned by Arc System Works, has seen many iterations and remakes across different gaming platforms, with the latest mainline entry announced for 2023. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles – Turtles in Time from 1991 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles – Turtles in Time is a classic arcade game by Konami and a sequel to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. Released in 1991 and based on the 1987 TMNT animated series, this game sees the turtles chasing Krang, who has stolen the Statue of Liberty through time and space. The gameplay involves guiding Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello and Raphael through various levels, each set in different historical eras, battling iconic enemies like Shredder, Baxter Stockman and the Rat King. Players control movements, attacks and special moves with unique strengths for each turtle. The game was later ported to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and Sega Genesis and it received a 3D remake in 2009. Turtles in Time is a really nostalgic experience that takes players through an action-packed journey through time while brilliantly capturing the charm of the TMNT franchise. Its engaging gameplay and memorable boss fights make it an enduring arcade classic. Captain Commando 1991 Another futuristic beat-em-up game is Captain Commando, which is developed by Capcom. In the game, players are set on a mission to cleanse crime from Metro City and beyond in the year 2026. The game features Captain Commando and his three commander companions battling super criminals led by the evil Scamoside. Up to four players can join simultaneously, each choosing one of the four commandos, Mac, Captain, Ginzu or Babyhead. The gameplay is reminiscent of Capcom's final fight with players navigating through nine stages, battling enemies, avoiding traps and facing bosses. The control scheme includes an eight-way joystick and two action buttons for attacking and jumping with special moves and the ability to dash. Players can pick up health-restoring items, weapons like firearms and shurikens, and even command robots with unique abilities. The game offers a thrilling arcade experience with its engaging team-based gameplay and unique futuristic setting. Its diverse characters and innovative combat mechanics make it a standout title in the beat-em-up genre. River City Ransom from 1989 River City Ransom was initially released as street gangs in PAL regions 
and is an iconic open-world action RPG and beat-em-up game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This English adaptation of Downtown Neketsu Monogatari by Technos Japan was introduced in Japan during 1989. It stands as the third installment in the Kunio-kun series tailored for Western audiences with significant storyline and visual modifications. The plot centers on Cindy's kidnapping by a villain named Slick. It is up to Ryan, Cindy's boyfriend, and his brother Alex to navigate through River City to rescue her. Throughout their journey, they encounter and battle against various student gangs, each with distinct traits and attack patterns. The gameplay in River City Ransom is both super exciting with impressive mechanics and RPG elements. It is characterized by its non-linear sandbox-style open world. Players engage in combat reminiscent of Double Dragon, utilizing a variety of items as weapons. They can also upgrade their character's abilities with different techniques and stats. The game's progress is tracked using a password system. With its engaging plot and innovative gameplay, this one has made it to the list of one of the best timeless classics of the beat-em-up genre. Streets of Rage 2 from 1993 Streets of Rage 2, known in Japan as Bare Knuckle 2, is a 1992 side-scrolling beat-em-up game for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive and a sequel to the acclaimed Streets of Rage. The plot picks up a year after the first game, with returning characters Axel Stone and Blade Fielding joining forces with new characters Max Thunder, a powerful wrestler, and Eddie Skate Hunter, the rollerblading younger brother of Adam Hunter from the original game. The group embarks on a mission to rescue Adam, who has been kidnapped by the nefarious Mr. X and his criminal organization, The Syndicate. The gameplay retains the essence of its predecessor, but introduces new elements like unique blitz attacks for each character and health-costing special attacks, replacing the police car support from the first game. Streets of Rage 2 really sets a benchmark in the beat-em-up genre, with its appealing gameplay and memorable characters. Truly a quintessential Sega Genesis classic that still resonates with fans for its thrilling action and iconic soundtrack. <laughs> Final Fight 1989 Final Fight is another side-scrolling beat-em-up video game by Capcom which was released in arcades in 1989 and quickly became a seminal title in its genre. Set in the crime-ridden Metro City, players choose from three characters – Mike Hager, a former pro wrestler and city mayor Tony Travers, an expert brawler, and Guy, a modern-day ninja. The trio sets on a mission to rescue Jessica, Hager's daughter, and Cody's girlfriend from the clutches of the Mad Gear Gang. Originally conceived as a sequel to Street Fighter, the game's success led to its change to a beat-em-up and inspired several home console ports. Gameplay involves up to two players fighting through various city locales, using combos, throws, and special attacks to defeat waves of enemies. Each character has unique fighting styles and abilities, contributing to the game's diverse combat system. Final Fight is known for its challenging stages an iconic continuous screen featuring the player character tied to a chair with a lit bundle of dynamite. Final Fight's legacy in arcade gaming is both unmistakable and deserved. X-Men from 1992. X-Men, released by Konami in 1992, has players get to choose from six X-Men characters – Cyclops, Colossus, Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler, or Dazzler – embarking on a mission to thwart the villain Magneto and rescue Professor X and Kitty Pride. The game, known for its six-player feature using a deluxe two-screen cabinet, was a commercial success in arcades and received recognition for its innovative technology. Gameplay involves navigating through various levels, battling enemies like sentinels and supervillains including Pyro, Blob and Juggernaut. Characters use standard attacks complemented by unique mutant powers, which are powerful but costly in terms of health. Konami's X-Men arcade game really succeeds in capturing the essence of the beloved comic series with a thrilling, action-packed gameplay and a faithful cast of characters. <laughs> A 
Alien vs Predator from 1994. Alien vs Predator, a 1994 arcade beat-em-up game by Capcom, combines the iconic sci-fi franchises into an action-packed experience. Set in San Drad, California, players choose from four characters, two cyborgs, Major Dutch Schaefer and Lieutenant Lynn Kurosawa, and two predators to battle an alien infestation. The game stands out for its three-player cooperative gameplay and varied character arsenal, with each character wielding unique melee and projectile weapons. The plot revolves around the characters forming an unlikely alliance to eradicate the alien threat and uncovering a sinister bio-war project led by General Bush and the Wayland yutani Corporation. After a series of intense battles culminating in the destruction of the alien queen and the enemy ship, the game ends with the Predators leaving Earth, leaving a hint of uncertainty about future encounters. Alien vs Predator offers intense action and engaging storyline, making it another attraction for players of the beat-em-up genre. Golden Axe from 1989 Golden Axe, released by Sega in 1989, is a hack-and-slash game where players get on a quest in the high fantasy world of Yuria. The game features three warriors with a personal vendetta against the tyrant Death Adder, who has seized the Golden Axe and taken the royal family hostage. Players can choose from Gilius Thunderhead, a dwarf seeking revenge for his brother's death, Axe Battler, a barbarian avenging his mother, or Taurus Flare, an Amazon whose parents were killed by Death Adder. The journey involves rescuing Turtle Village and culminates in a battle against Death Adder and Death Bringer in some versions at his castle. Gameplay involves combat against various enemies using weapons, magic, and creatures like the Cockatrice and Dragon. Magic is powered by collecting potions, and each character has unique spells. Some versions also include a dual mode for added challenge. Golden Axe blends mythical storytelling with engaging combat, with its innovative use of magic and mounts. The iconic characters make it a timeless arcade experience. Splatterhouse from 1988. Splatterhouse, the 1988 beat-em-up arcade game, is noted for its horror themes and graphic violence. Players control Rick, a college student resurrected by the Terror Mask, as he fights through West Mansion to rescue his girlfriend Jennifer. The gameplay, inspired by Western horror films and H.P. Lovecraft's works, combines side-scrolling action with platform elements. Rick, equipped with basic combat moves and the ability to use various weapons, navigates through the mansion, facing diverse enemies and boss fights with unique objectives. Unlike many games in its genre, Splatterhouse employs checkpoints instead of continuous play after losing lives, adding to its challenge. It stands out in the horror-themed video gaming with a combination of intense action with a macabre storyline. Guardian Heroes 1996 Guardian Heroes, developed by Treasure for the Sega Saturn in 1996, is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up game infused with RPG elements. The game sets itself apart with a dynamic storyline influenced by player choices, leading to multiple endings and a karma meter affected by actions like killing civilians. Players select from four warriors who discover a sword and must navigate a complex conflict involving Earth and Sky Spirits, wizards, and a rebellion against the Tarrant Cannon. The gameplay features experience points for character development, multiple battle planes, and a versatile versus mode for up to six players. The game's innovative mechanics allow customization of character attributes and offer varied combat scenarios. Shadow Force 1993 Shadow Force is a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up game which takes players into a world where humanity is under threat from Dr. Wong and his teaser organization. Players can choose from four unique characters, Ninja Kai, Sword Fighter Blunet, Muscle Man Tengu, or Beast Man Coyote, each with its own strengths and abilities. As players progress through the game, they play over 20 different enemy types, including soldiers, samurais, shape-shifting blobs, and formidable bosses. A standout feature of this game is the ability for players to transform into these enemies, adopting their forms and abilities for combat. The game structure offers flexibility with the order of the first three stages and includes a versus fighting segment between stages. Players can replenish health 
with in-game food items and enjoy the game either solo or with a friend in cooperative play. The game is quite an attraction due to its unique enemy transformation feature and varied character roster. The mix of action, strategy and cooperative gameplay make it a memorable entry in the genre. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Arcade Game 1989 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a 1989 arcade beat-em-up game by Konami, is set in the universe of the popular animated series. Players take control of the four Ninja Turtles, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello and Raphael, to rescue their friends April O'Neil and Splinter from the evil Shredder, battling through various levels against the Foot Clan and other notorious enemies. Each turtle has unique attributes like Donatello's longer range but slower attacks and Michelangelo and Raphael's faster but shorter range attacks, while Leonardo offers balanced capabilities. Gameplay features include an 8-way joystick for movement, buttons for attacks and jumps, special moves and the ability to use environmental objects against enemies. The game's enemies, mainly foot soldiers, vary in color to indicate their attack styles and weapons. Bosses include characters like Rocksteady, Bebop and Baxter Stockman. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Kawabanga Collection adds enhancements like Level Select, God Mode and Adjustable Difficulty, providing a refreshed experience for new and returning players. Dungeons & Dragons – Shadow over Mistara from 1996 Developed by Capcom in 1996, Dungeons & Dragons – Shadow over Mistara is an arcade game that is a perfect combination of side-strolling beat-em-up action with role-playing elements. The plot follows the hero's journey to thwart the sorcerer's sin, a powerful red dragon scheming to conquer kingdoms and awaken a monstrous creature known as the Fiend. The game is set in the D&D campaign setting of Mistara. Tara. Players select from six characters, each with unique abilities and magic, and can choose the same character in different forms, effectively offering 12 options. The game stands out with its RPG mechanics such as equipping gear, earning new spells, and using items like scrolls and magical equipment. The combat system incorporates special moves and combos akin to the Street Fighter series, and characters can cast spells using D&D's Vancian magic system. Players can find and equip a variety of items, with magical gear being fragile and destructible. Between stages, players can visit town stores to restock or trade items. Shadow over Mistara expertly merges the depth of Dungeons & Dragons with arcade action, offering a rich, engaging experience unique in this genre. The strategy, character customization and dynamic combat all mixes well and makes it a cult classic. Double Dragon 2 The Revenge 1988 The sequel to the acclaimed Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge offers innovative controls and varied gameplay. Players get on a revenge mission as Billy and Jimmy Lee, seeking justice for the murder of Billy's girlfriend Marion by the Black Warrior's leader Willie. This game differentiates itself from its predecessor with new control mechanics including two directional based attack buttons and new moves like the Hurricane Kick. The arcade version features four missions, each culminating in boss battles against distinct enemies like Burnov and Jin Taimei and a final showdown with Willy and the player's doppelgangers. Enemies wield a variety of weapons and players must navigate through diverse environments managing their life meter and the timer. The game was ported to several platforms with significant variations in level design, enemy roster and gameplay in each version. Its compelling narrative and action-packed stages solidify its status as a classic in the genre. <laughs> The Punisher from 1993 The Punisher, a 1993 arcade beat-em-up developed by Capcom, stars Marvel Comics anti-hero Frank Castle, aka The Punisher, and S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Nick Fury. They are onboarded on a vengeful mission against the crime lord Kingpin 
to dismantle his organization. The game follows Capcom's established side-scrolling formula similar to Final Fight and Captain Commando, with an emphasis on combat against various enemies, boss battles, and a comic-style presentation. The Punisher and Nick Fury, while visually distinct, share similar moves and special attacks. The game is notable for its range of weapons, high violence level, and frequent use of firearms, with the players able to use melee weapons, thrown objects, and even firearms against their foes. Health and bonus points can be replenished or gained by finding items throughout the stages. The game begins with the Punisher pursuing the Mafia Enforcer responsible for his family's death leading to battles against various mobsters and eventually a final showdown with a kingpin. The Punisher is one of the best in delivering intense arcade action, faithfully capturing the brutal essence of its comic book roots. Knights of the Round 1991. Released by Capcom in 1991, Knights of the Round reimagines the legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Players embark on a quest as Arthur, Lancelot, and Percival to overthrow the evil King Garibaldi and unite Britain. The game incorporates an action RPG-like level advancement system where characters automatically upgrade their weapons and armor as they progress. The gameplay, reminiscent of Capcom's other beat-em-ups like Final Fight, features seven stages each with its boss and various enemies. A unique aspect is the blocking ability, essential for countering boss attacks and gaining brief invincibility. Players can also perform desperation attacks at the cost of health and have opportunities to ride horses, adding another dimension to combat. The game was re-released digitally in 2018 as part of the Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle. Altered Beast 1988 18. Altered Beast 1988 Altered Beast stands out with its unique transformation mechanics and mythological settings, offering a distinctive beat-em-up experience. Developed and published by Sega in 1988, the game features characters chosen by Zeus to rescue his daughter Athena from Neph the ruler of the underworld. It is notable for its power-up system that allows the player to transform into various magical beasts, each with unique abilities. The game spans five levels, featuring a mix of side-scrolling combat and light platforming elements against the backdrop of Greek mythology-inspired enemies and landscapes. The player can punch, kick, and jump to combat undead creatures and monsters, culminating in confrontations with Neff at the end of each level. Collecting three spirit balls in a level transforms the player into different beast forms, such as a were-dragon or were-tiger, each offering enhanced combat capabilities. Altered Beast was ported to numerous platforms and its arcade release and various ports have received mixed reviews particularly regarding gameplay and graphics. Despite this, it has been re-released multiple times and spawned two sequels. While it shows its age in graphics and gameplay, it remains a memorable title for its innovative concepts and arcade charm. The Simpsons, the arcade game, 1991. Developed and published by Konami in 1991, the Simpsons was the first North American video game based on the popular animated series. The game, featuring the show's original voice actors, allows up to four players to control members of the Simpson family in their quest to rescue Maggie, who has been kidnapped by Smithers after a diamond he stole from Mr. Burns lands in her mouth. Players battled through eight stages across Springfield, culminating in a showdown at the nuclear power plant against Smithers and Mr. Burns, who dons a weaponized mobile battlesuit. The game's success led to ports for Commodore 64 and MS-DOS, and a 30th anniversary edition home arcade cabinet by Arcade 1UP in 2021. The gameplay is characterized by its side-scrolling action, where each Simpson family member has unique attack styles. Homer punches and kicks. Marge uses a vacuum cleaner, Bart wheels a skateboard, and Lisa attacks with a jump rope. Players can combine attacks for more power using health-restoring food items and wield various weapons. The game includes mini-games between stages, 
and features both two-player and four-player cabinet models. The Japanese version of the game presents several gameplay differences, including throwable nuclear bombs and a multi-level life bar system. Its mix of humor, character-specific attacks, and cooperative gameplay make it a cherished classic in the arcade genre. Comic Zone 1995. Comic Zone stands out for its innovative comic book style presentation and engaging gameplay. The game was developed and published by Sega for the Genesis in 1995 and offers a unique visual style through puzzle solving action. The game's protagonist, Sketch Turner, is a New York artist who becomes trapped in his own comic, Comic Zone, during a thunderstorm. The game's villain, Mortis, escapes from the comic and attempts to kill Sketch to become real. Sketch must navigate through the comic world, fighting off enemies drawn by Mortis and teaming up with General Alyssa Cyan to thwart Mortis's plans. The gameplay blends traditional beat-em-up action with platform elements, allowing Sketch to punch, kick and jump his way through comic panels. Unique features include the ability to use Sketch's pet rat, Roadkill, to access dangerous areas and the use of items like bombs, iced tea for health and a transformation into Super Sketch for powerful attacks. Health diminishes not just from enemy attacks, but also from using certain abilities or breaking through obstacles. The game ends with different outcomes based on the player's performance in the final battle against Mortis. Armored Warriors 1994 Armored Warriors, a mecha-themed beat-em-up game released by Capcom in 1994, is set in a future where players control powerful mechs to engage in intense combat. Set in 2281, the game's plot unfolds after the ceasefire treaty between the United Earth Government and the principalities of Raya. Following reports of the Ryan capital, Melchide's capture by an unknown army, the United Earth Government dispatches forces to retake the capital and save its citizens. However, the operation's hidden agenda is to eliminate the mysterious enemy and bring Raya under Earth's control, unbeknownst to the public. The game, known for its multiplayer option, allows players to customize their mechs with various parts collected from defeated enemies, leading to a diverse range of attack styles and strategies. The game features a mission-like structure with seven stages, each ending in a boss fight and presenting unique challenges like time limits and ammunition constraints. The team-up change option enables powerful combined attacks, further enhancing the dynamic gameplay experience. The game's mech customization and cooperative gameplay add on to the exhilarating experience for the players. Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder, 1992 Golden Axe, The Revenge of Death Adder was released by Sega in 1992. It's a sequel to the original Golden Axe, enhancing the hack and slash action with new characters and features. This arcade exclusive utilizes the System32 arcade board for improved graphics and supports up to four players simultaneously. The game introduces four new protagonists, Goa the Giant, Sternblade the Barbarian, Dora the Kentoride, and Little Trix an Elf Lad, who journey to defeat the infamous Death Adder. Notably, Gilius Thunderhead from the first game appears, assisting Goa with magic spells. The game innovates with multiple parts and a revised magic system where spells don't scale with collected pots, but require a set number to activate. One unique aspect is Trix's non-offensive magic, which grows apple trees for health restoration. Players encounter decision points for different pathways, adding to the game's replayability. Despite its arcade-only presence until 2020, when it was included in the Astro City Mini and an arcade one-up cabinet, the Revenge of Death Adder received acclaim, being listed as one of the best beat-em-ups by time extension in 2023. The game elevates the classic franchise with enhanced graphics, engaging multiplayer action, and innovative gameplay choices. Its distinct characters and branching parts make it a standout title in the beat-em-up genre, cherished for its enduring arcade legacy. Battletoads, 1994. Released in 1994, 
Battletoads Arcade impresses us with its varied gameplay, memorable characters and departure from conventional aesthetics. The game was developed by Rare and published by Electronic Arts. As part of the Battletoads series, it allows up to three players to control the Battletoads, Rash, Pimple and Zitz as they fight through six levels to save the universe from the Dark Queen. Notable for its enhanced violence and gore, compared to previous entries, the game was Rare's first to use 3D graphics technology, which would later be seen in Donkey Kong Country and Killer Instinct. Despite its positive playtests and innovative gameplay, the game underperformed in arcades, leading to the cancellation of its home ports and contributing to a long hiatus for the franchise. It eventually made its console debut in 2015 as part of the Rare Replay compilation for the Xbox One. Gameplay is characterized by each Toad's unique fighting style and signature exaggerated attacks, where limbs transform into weapons like axes and drills. The game features varied level themes, boss fights and gameplay styles, including 2.5D brawling and jetpack levels. Health regeneration through eating flies and the ability to break the fourth wall remain staples in the series. The game excels at showcasing creativity and technical innovation and notable for its bold approach to this genre. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs 1993 if you are up for a thrilling arcade experience with a unique setting, diverse character roster and engaging gameplay mechanics, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs might be one of the best choices for you. This game was released in 1993 by Capcom based on the comic series Xenozoic Tales. Set in the 26th century, the game follows four heroes, Jack Tenrek, Hannah Dundee, Mustafa Cairo and Mess Obradovich, as they combat the Black Marketeers, a gang hunting dinosaurs for nefarious purposes. The plot revolves around the hero's journey to stop the dinosaur hunting, leading them through various environments to confront key figures in the Black Marketeer's network. The journey culminates in a showdown with Dr. Simon Fessenden, the mastermind behind the chaos, resulting in a final battle and a dramatic escape from Fessenden's collapsing lab. The game features eight stages where players can choose from these characters, each with unique abilities, battling enemies and dinosaurs, which can attack both players and foes. The game incorporates special moves, firearms, throwing weapons and melee weapons. An intense moment arises when a player loses as a villain points a gun at the player's character heightening the stakes for continuing the game. The post-apocalyptic adventure mixed with beat-em-up action makes it a memorable title in the Capcom's arcade legacy. Spider-Man and Venom – Maximum Carnage 1994 With a rich comic book storyline that captures the essence of its Marvel origins, Spider-Man and Venom – Maximum Carnage really highlights action and engaging combat gameplay. It was released in 1994 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and Mega Drive Genesis. Based on the comic book story arc of the same name, the game features Marvel Comics heroes like Spider-Man, Venom, Captain America, Black Cat, Iron Fist and others teaming up to battle Carnage and his villainous group, including Shrek, Doppelganger, Devil Goblin, and Carrion. The plot revolves around Eddie Brock's release from jail and the symbiote bonding with his former cellmate, Cletus Cassidy, who becomes Carnage. Spider-Man and Venom, despite their rivalry, join forces to stop Carnage's chaos in New York City. The game was initially met with mixed reviews, but has since been appreciated as one of the better Spider-Man games of the 16-bit era. The game, notable for its red-colored cartridges in early prints stands out for its comic-styled cutscenes and the inclusion of various Marvel heroes that can be summoned for assistance. Players control Spider-Man and Venom through levels filled with enemies, using their unique abilities to combat Carnage's criminal onslaught.
Die Hard Arcade 1996. Die Hard Arcade, known as Dynamite Decker in Japan, is notable for being the first of its kind to use texture mapped 3D polygon graphics. Blending action from the Die Hard movie franchise with original elements, the game offers players the role of John McClane or Chris Thompson, Bruno Dellinger, and Cindy Holiday in Japan as they fight to save the president's daughter from terrorists. Its gameplay combines traditional beat-em-up mechanics with features akin to fighting games, including a complex moveset, quick-time events, and the ability to craft powerful weapons by combining items. In two-player mode, players can execute combined special moves and combos. The game's levels consist of fighting through enemies in various locations, culminating in boss battles against unique characters like Hog, Jocko, and Wolf Whitefang Hongo. Quick-time events are interspersed throughout, with failure resulting in health loss or additional action scenes. The game concludes dramatically with a rooftop showdown between the two players for the president's daughter's appreciation if both survive. Undercover Cops 1992 Undercover Cops, developed and published by RM in 1992, is a classic arcade-style game set in a dystopian New York City in the year 2043. Players control a group of city sweepers who are police agent-like characters fighting crime in this futuristic setting. The game is recognized for its detailed, gritty backgrounds and a level of gore that was notable for its time, featuring environments with crow-picked skeletons and intense boss battles. Gameplay-wise, while Undercover Cops draws inspiration from Final Fight, it distinguishes itself with unique enemies, including mole creatures and mutants with jetpacks. Players cannot use enemy weapons but can utilize various objects found in stages, such as burning oil drums and concrete columns as weapons. Health is restored by consuming unconventional items like mice and frogs, reflecting the game's humor that would later be seen in IRM's Metal Slug series. The Japanese version of the game offers additional character moves, differing backgrounds, music, and enemy types compared to the world version. Notable references include a police car reminiscent of the tank from Irem's Moon Patrol and a boss from R-Type appearing on television screens within the game. The game stands out in the beat-em-up genre with futuristic action, dark humor, and a variety in combat that makes it a distinctive and memorable arcade experience among the players. Metamorphic Force 1993 Released by Konami in 1993, Metamorphic Force offers classic beat-em-up the action with unique shape-shifting mechanics offering a distinct and engaging arcade experience. The game shares similarities with Konami's earlier hit X-Men and uses the same hardware as Mystic Warriors. Set in a world where the evil king Death Shadow has risen to rule once more, the Greek goddess Athena empowers four heroes with the souls of ancient guardians, granting them the ability to morph into anthropomorphic beasts. These heroes ban a martial artist who transforms into a minotaur, Claude, a swordsman who becomes a white werewolf, Max, a fighter turning into a were-panther, and Ivan, a hunter and wrestler who morphs into a were-bear, embarking on a quest to defeat the evil empire. The gameplay involves the characters morphing into their beast forms by collecting golden statue power-ups, significantly enhancing their combat abilities. Enemies in the game are also anthropomorphic creatures, and the stages feature boss fights against unique adversaries. The game includes bonus stages for extra points and health, and differences exist between the US and Japanese versions, notably in the health system and the fifth stage's boss rush. The mythical storyline, diverse characters, and innovative gameplay really highlight the key elements of the game, making it a memorable title of the beat-em-up genre. Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Hyperstone Heist, 1992, also known as Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, The Hyperstone Heist in Europe, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Return of the Shredder in Japan, was developed and published by Konami. It was their debut title for the Genesis, and later re-released as part of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Titles, The Kawabanga Collection in 2022. The game's plot revolves around April O'Neil witnessing Manhattan Island shrinking due to 
Shredder's use of the Hyperstone from Dimension X, prompting the Turtles to stop his world domination plans. The game closely mirrors that of Turtles in Time, with similar control but with the addition of a dedicated dash button and the removal of the ability to throw enemies at the screen. The game features an aggressive enemy AI and faster paced action, along with a soundtrack similar to Turtles in Time but with faster music. The Hyperstone Heist includes five extended levels, a combination of new and adapted ones from previous games, and features bosses like Leatherhead, Rocksteady and Super Shredder. The game expertly captures the essence of the franchise with fast-paced action and engaging levels. It's both familiar and original content, along with refined gameplay mechanics, makes it a standout title in the beat-em-up genre and a favorite among TMNT games. Captain America and the Avengers 1991 Captain America and the Avengers is all about the classic arcade experience, blending beloved Marvel characters with engaging beat-em-up action. This arcade game was developed by Data East in 1991 and features the Marvel comic superhero team in a quest to thwart the evil Red Skull's world domination plans. The game allows players to choose from four Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye and Vision, each with unique combat abilities and special Avenger attacks. The gameplay involves classic side-scrolling, brawling and shooting segments where players face a roster of supervillains like Claw, Juggernaut and Ultron, culminating in a final showdown with Red Skull. Additionally, the game includes side-scrolling, flying and shooting sequences, with some Avengers like Iron Man and Vision able to fly on their own, while others use flying machines. The game received multiple ports and was available in two arcade formats, a four-player version with each character assigned to a specific position and a two-player version where any of the four characters could be selected. The gameplay combines traditional brawler elements with unique superhero abilities, enhanced by cameo appearances from other Avengers like Wasp and Namor, who provide temporary assistance. Its varied character abilities, iconic villains and cooperative gameplay make it a memorable title for comic book and arcade enthusiasts alike. The Death and Return of Superman 1994 The Death and Return of Superman, the 1994 video game for the Super NES and Genesis, is based on the DC Comics storyline of the same name. Developed by Sunsoft, this game features several characters from the comics, including Superman, Superboy, Steel, Cyborg Superman, The Eradicator and Doomsday, all of whom are playable at different points. The plot begins with a power failure in Metropolis, leading to Superman's battle against Doomsday and his subsequent death. This event is followed by the emergence of four other supermen, each claiming to be the original. The story unfolds with each character's perspective culminating in the return of the real Superman and the defeat of Cyborg Superman. The gameplay consists of standard beat-em-up mechanics where players control one of the five supermen, each with unique abilities. Players move in all directions, battling a set number of enemies before progressing. The characters can perform a range of attacks, including melee, grappling and throws, as well as special projectile and ultimate attacks that destroy all standard enemies on the screen. The game incorporates flying levels and segments where characters must use their abilities to overcome obstacles and enemies. The Death and Return of Superman delivers a solid beat-em-up experience, capturing the essence of the iconic comic storyline. Splatterhouse 2 1992 Splatterhouse 2, developed by Now Production and published by Namco for the Sega Genesis in 1992, is a sequel to the original Splatterhouse and the third installment in the series. The game follows protagonist Rick, who is haunted by nightmares of failing to save his girlfriend Jennifer and haunted by visions of the Terror Mask, which persuades him to return to the house where he believes Jennifer can be saved. Set three months after the first game, Rick's journey involves navigating through grotesque environments and battling monstrous entities. In 2008, the game was released on the Y Virtual Console, notable for being the first ESRB M-rated game on the platform. It was also included in the 2010 remake and the Sega Genesis Mini 2 in 2022. The gameplay closely mirrors its predecessor, with Rick traversing eight two-dimensional stages, engaging in combat using punches, kicks 
objects and various weapons. Each level culminates in a boss fight against bizarre and horrific creatures. The game introduces a difficulty setting and a password system in the English version. Notably, there are regional differences in the game's presentation, particularly in the design of the terror mask and certain plot details, leading to variations in the storyline's interpretation. Splatterhouse 2 enhances its predecessor's formula with a compelling mix of horror and action, delivering a uniquely gruesome and challenging beat-em-up experience. Its combination of eerie atmosphere and intense gameplay solidifies its status as a cult classic in the genre. Batman Returns 1992 Batman Returns for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System is a 1993 beat-em-up video game developed and published by Konami based on the film of the same name. The game mirrors the film's plot, taking the player through seven vividly recreated scenes, each culminating in boss fights against key antagonists. Players control Batman as he battles the Red Triangle Circus Gang across Gotham City, from the plaza and city streets to the rooftops and Penguin's Arctic World Lair. Notable scenes include rescuing Selina Kyle, a high-speed Batmobile chase, and confrontations with Catwoman, Penguin, and various circus-themed henchmen. Featuring gameplay and graphics reminiscent of the Final Fight series, the game offers a range of combat options, including Batman's iconic Batarang and a variety of physical attacks. The game's faithful adaptation of the movie's settings and characters, combined with the engaging beat-em-up mechanics, creates an immersive experience for both Batman fans and retro Pro gaming enthusiasts. Bravo. E Rap Boys 1992. B Rap Boys is an arcade only beat em up game developed and published by Kaneko in 1992 and serves as the direct sequel to DJ Boy. Unlike its predecessor, B Rap Boys did not receive any home ports. The game is recognized for its significant improvements over DJ Boy, particularly in its smoother roller skating physics, faster paced and more responsive combat mechanics, and a soundtrack that enhances the game's vibrant atmosphere. Players navigate navigate through three stages, each divided into two to three sections, engaging in intense brawls and utilizing weapons for long-range combat. The game also features a scoring system where extends are earned at every 2,000 to 3,000 points, a threshold adjustable in the EEPROM, a threshold adjustable in the EEPROM. The game stands out with its unique blend of roller skating action and rhythmic beat em up gameplay. The improvements from the DJ Boy are notable, offering players a more fluid and engaging experience. The game's atmosphere, bolstered by its fitting soundtrack, adds to the overall enjoyment, making it a memorable arcade title from the early 90s. Night Slasher Developed by Data East Night Slashers, Night Slashers is a 1993 arcade beat-em-up which stands out with its unique horror theme. The gameplay shares similarities with iconic titles like Capcom's Final Night and Sega's Streets of Rage series offering side-scrolling action where one to three players battle through various levels to defeat enemies and bosses. Unlike its contemporaries, Night Slashers delves into a world of horror, pitting players against zombies, mutants and classic monsters like vampires, werewolves and elementals. Boss battles include encounters with a mummy, a golem, a mad scientist and even characters resembling Count Dracula and Frankenstein's monster. The player's objective is to thwart the sinister plans of King Zara roots, who aims to transform Earth into a kingdom for the undead. Unique to the game is its extensive movesets for the characters, including powerful smart bomb or screen zapper moves. Additionally, the Japanese version of Night Slashers features uncensored blood and gore, with the option to adjust blood color and violence levels in the overseas version. The game's horror elements are further emphasized through in-game cues like a go arrow that flips to read to hell in blood and additional cutscene content in Japanese version, adding to the immersive and eerie atmosphere. Night Slashers distinguishes itself with traditional beat-em-up mechanics and a compelling horror theme, delivering a unique arcade experience.
Alien Storm 1990. Developed by Sega in 1990, Alien Storm is a beat em up shooter game with a plot centered around Earth's invasion by a homicidal alien race. The only defense against this extraterrestrial threat is a special forces team called the Alien Busters, consisting of Karen, Garth, and Scooter, a robot. This game was ported to various platforms, including the Genesis Mega Drive Master System, and was later re released on platforms like the WISE Virtual Console and Nintendo Switch Online Plus Extension Pack. The gameplay is similar to Sega's Golden Axe, featuring side-scrolling action, three playable characters, a man, a woman and a novelty character, and special power-up attacks. Players embark on a mission to save Earth, battling through various stages, including the streets and the alien mothership. The game poses increasing challenges across its six to eight missions, with aliens capable of hiding in everyday objects. Players can select any of the busters from the start and utilize their unique weapons and special attacks, which consume energy. These attacks range from summoning airstrikes to nuclear missiles, depending on the character. The game also includes shooting gallery sections and running segments akin to horizontal shooters, adding variety to the standard beat-em-up gameplay. The game offers an exciting, action-packed experience with its diverse combat scenarios and unique character abilities. Warriors of Fate. Warriors of Fate, also known in Japan as Tenchi Wo Kurao 2, Seki Heiki no Tatakai, is another side scrolling beat em up game produced by Capcom, which is based on the Tenchi Wo Kurao manga. Originally released in arcades in 1992, it saw home versions for Sega, Saturn, and PlayStation in 1996, and a mobile phone version in 2005. The game features nine stages, each filled with diverse enemies, including spearmen, archers, and bomb wielders culminating in a boss fight. Up to three players can join the fray, utilizing two button controls for attack and jump. The characters based on generals from the Romance of the Three Kingdoms include Guan Yu, Zheng Fi, Zhao Yun, Huang Zong and Wai Tan, each with unique moves and the ability to summon a warhorse for added attacks. The storyline, inspired by the romance of the Three Kingdoms, follows Liu Bei's resistance against Chao Chao's invasion. However, in the English adaptation, the Three Kingdoms context is replaced with a fictional narrative featuring Mongolian-themed characters battling the evil overlord Akila Orkan. Through its engaging gameplay and rich narrative inspired by Chinese history, the fantasy elements of the game are able to stand out. Sengoku 3, the final entry in SNK's Sengoku series, is set in a world teeming with undead spirits. The game allows players to control one of four initial characters, with two additional characters unlockable as the game progresses. Each character battles through various stages filled with hordes of undead enemies, showcasing unique abilities and fighting styles. Originally launched for the Neo Geo MVS arcade system, it was later adapted for the Neo Geo AES home system and re-released on various consoles. The game's soundtrack, composed by Toshikazu Tanaka, is notable for its high quality, achieved through streaming playback, a challenging feat given the limitations of the sound driver at the time. Sengoku 3 has gained a reputation as a collector's item, especially the North American AES release, which commands high prices in the video game collecting market. The game stands out as a stellar conclusion to the series, blending intense combat with a hauntingly atmospheric setting. Its engaging gameplay and exceptional soundtrack make it a memorable and highly sought-after title in the beat-em-up genre. <laughs> Battle Circuit Battle Circuit is a standout title in Capcom's illustrious arcade history. Its mix of quirky characters and futuristic setting offers an engaging and memorable gameplay experience for fans of the genre. This Capcom's last arcade game is set in an alternate future Earth. It revolves around a group of bounty hunters tasked with capturing the mad scientist Dr. Saturn and securing the Shiva system, a program capable of controlling all computerized systems. 
The game features comic-like characters in a science fiction setting and supports up to four players simultaneously. Each player can choose from one of five unique characters, each with their own set of abilities that can be expanded by purchasing upgrade discs with coins obtained from defeated enemies. The game progresses through various levels filled with enemies that players must defeat using their character's attack and movement abilities. The classic beat-em-up mechanics with unique character abilities and upgrades is what What's notably impressive about this game. Vendetta 1991 In Vendetta, players join the Cobras, a hero gang rivaling the Dead End Gang, to rescue their kidnapped member Kate. Set in Dead End City, the Cobras Blood, Hawk, Boomer and Sledge navigate through enemy territory facing hordes of violent criminals led by Faust, who seeks total control of the city. The game, a sequel to Konami's Crime Fighters, is known for introducing the ability to attack enemies while they are down, a novel feature in the genre at the time. It uses punches and kick buttons, allowing for special combined attacks that consume health. Players can utilize various weapons, including shotguns, baseball bats, and knives, either found in the environment or taken from enemies. The gameplay consists of defeating waves of enemies and bosses, culminating in a final massive fight against all resurrected bosses. If successful, the game loops with increased difficulty. This one elevates the beat-em-up genre with its innovative combat mechanics and gritty storyline. Its array of weapons and intense boss battles offer a challenging yet satisfying experience, making it a standout title in the arcade beat-em-up genre. Ah! Final Flight 3, 1995 Final Fight 3, released in 1995, is a side-scrolling beat-em-up developed by Catcom for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This sequel to the iconic Final Fight series brings back Guy and Hagger, introducing new characters Lucia and Dane. The Quartet battles against the emerging Skullcross gang, aiming to restore peace in Metro City. The game innovates with new moves, branching paths, multiple endings, and an option for CPU-controlled partner assistance. Despite these enhancements, Critics felt it fell short in significantly evolving from the original Final Fight, leading to a lukewarm reception. It adds fresh features and characters to the beloved franchise, but it struggles to break new ground in the beat-em-up genre. While it offers enjoyable gameplay and variety, it doesn't quite escape the shadow of its groundbreaking predecessor. Golden Axe 3 1993. Developed by Sega for the Sega Mega Drive, Golden Axe 3 was released in Japan in 1993 with a North American release exclusive to the Sega Channel. This installment of the game introduces a new plot with Damod Hellstrike, the Prince of Hell, who curses the warriors and steals the Golden Axe. One hero is freed from the curse and embarks on a quest to lift the curse from the others, defeat Dumud and retrieve the Golden Axe. The game expands the series' hack-and-slash gameplay with new characters, moves, teamwork attacks and magic spells. Players navigate through junction points to choose their path in the game. The character roster includes a giant proud Kragger, a humanoid panther, Kronos evil Wraith and two sword-wielding characters, Kane Grinder and Sarah Byrne, reminiscent of previous series protagonists. Gilius Thunderhead from earlier games appears in cutscenes. Golden Axe 3 introduces blocking, sweep and projectile attacks and an enhanced grappling system. Some characters have unique abilities like double jumping and wall jumping and in multiplayer, characters can execute coordinated attacks. The magic system returns to its original format with characters using all collected portions for spells. The game features new mounts called Bizarrans, and players have the opportunity to choose their route, affecting the game's ending. Golden Axe 3 brings welcome innovations to the series with its expanded character abilities and decision-driven parts, offering a fresh perspective to the franchise. However, the game's deviation from some classic elements may leave long-term fans yearning for the original's charm. Spider-Man, the video game. 
Spider-Man the video game offers a thrilling arcade experience with its unique blend of beat-em-up and platforming gameplay set against the backdrop of memorable Marvel villains. In this game, Spider-Man and his allies embark on a quest to reclaim a mystical artifact, initially seized by the Kingpin and later falling into the hands of Doctor Doom. The game's blend of genres and characters creates a unique experience for Spider-Man fans. The gameplay alternates between side-scrolling beat-em-up and platforming elements, featuring a dynamic camera that zooms out for platforming segments, showcasing characters in miniature, then zooms in for close-up, detailed brawling action. Up to four players can join cooperatively, each choosing from iconic characters like Spider-Man, Hawkeye and Black Cat, each with special moves that highlight their superpowers but at the cost of health. The game is structured into four acts where players face a rogues gallery of villains including Venom, Dr. Octopus, Electro and the ever-cunning Dr. Doom. The game keeps separate high scores for each character, adding a competitive edge to replayability. Additionally, the game's soundtrack includes mixed tunes from Sega's 1986 game Quartet, further enhancing the retro gaming experience. Its dynamic camera work and character-specific challenges add depth, making it another standout title for both Spider-Man enthusiasts and arcade gamers. Growl Growl, also known as Runark in Japan, was developed by Taito in 1990, set in the early 20th century. The game's plot revolves around players taking on the roles of forest rangers, tasked with protecting wildlife from a group of malevolent poachers driving animals to extinction. The game offers a choice of four different forest rangers as playable characters, each varying in health, attack strength and jumping ability. It supports various multiplayer configurations, from common two-player setups to four-player modes, with different coin slot arrangements. Gameplay involves an eight-way joystick for movement and two buttons for attacks and jumps. The players can execute a range of attacks like punches, kicks and finishing moves, and they can unleash special attacks in specific situations. Weapons are obtainable by destroying barrels or disarming enemies, including melee weapons, firearms and throwing weapons. The game spans seven main stages and a bonus stage, set in diverse locations like cities, trains and jungles, and feature animal helpers who assist players once freed. The Sega Genesis port introduces some changes, including a single-player mode named Characters, modified special attacks, health recovery through apples, and altered weapons and stage design. The game's action-packed gameplay, weapon variety, and animal rescue elements delivers an engaging and mostly resonant arcade experience. Bucky O'Hare, 1992 Bucky O'Hare for the NES, developed by Konami under the direction of Masato Maegawa, is based on the comic book series of the same name. The game's plot revolves around Bucky O'Hare, the rabbit captain of the spaceship Righteous Indignation, and his crew members, who are captured by the Toad Air Marshal. The player begins as Bucky and ventures through the green, red, blue and yellow planets to rescue each crew member, who then becomes playable with unique abilities and weapons. After rescuing all members, the crew's spaceship is again captured, leading to further adventures in the Magnum Tanker. The game, praised for its graphics and gameplay, was criticized for not innovating within the platform genre and had mixed opinions regarding its difficulty level. The gameplay is reminiscent of Mega Man, with the option to tackle the first four levels, or planets, in any order. Each planet features unique environmental challenges and enemies, while bosses are encountered throughout, not just at level ends. Characters have distinct weapons and special abilities, adding strategic depth. The latter part of the game is set in the Magnum Tanker, adding variety to the game's environments and challenges. The game's vibrant graphics and engaging character abilities do indicate a well-executed comic adaptation. However, its traditional platforming mechanics and challenging difficulty might not appeal to all players. Sailor Moon Video Games 1995. Developed over two years with many challenges, Bishoujo Shenshi Sailor Moon Another Story was released exclusively in Japan during 1995. This role-playing video game immerses players in an original plot set between the third and fourth seasons of the Sailor Moon anime series. In this adventure, players control either the five inner guardians or the four outer guardians, embarking on a mission to protect Crystal Tokyo against a group of rebels and resurrected foes orchestrated by the sorceress Apsu. 
It features an intricately crafted story by Takashi Ikegaya and Yoshijiro Muramatsu, never officially released outside Japan but available through fan translations. Gameplay-wise, another story is a top-down RPG akin to classics like Chrono Trigger, where players navigate through various locations, engage in dialogue, solve puzzles, and confront enemies in random encounters leading to separate battle screens. Characters utilize physical and magical attacks, with hit points indicating their health status. Unique to this game are link techniques, allowing compatible Sailor Guardians to execute powerful combined attacks. The game's narrative unfolds with choices impacting the final boss sequence, offering two distinct outcomes. Players can collect puzzle pieces throughout their journey, unlocking a special reward upon completion. Zero Team 1993. In Zero Team, a dynamic 1993 side-scrolling beat-em-up, players dive into the action-packed roles of a four-member vigilante squad determined to rescue a kidnapped woman and bring down a criminal syndicate. The game, initially released with an option for four players to team up, was later rebranded for North American audiences as Zero Team USA and saw a re-release in 2000 as Zero Team 2000. Despite minor hardware changes, the core gameplay remained consistent across versions, offering a classic brawling experience. Players navigate through various urban environments, combating waves of enemies using a combination of martial arts, weapons, and unique character abilities. Each member of the Zero Team has distinct fighting styles and special moves, adding variety and strategy to the gameplay. Dynamite Cop 1998 Dynamite Cop, also known as Dynamite Decker 2 in Japan, is a sequel to the 1996's Die Hard Arcade. Released initially in arcades on Sega Model 2 hardware, it was later ported to the Dreamcast in 1999. The game abandons the Die Hard license, introducing new adventures. Players choose between three characters, Bruno Dillinger, Gene Ivey or Eddie Brown, and battle through a cruise ship and a deserted island. Their mission is to rescue the President's daughter from modern-day pirates, led by Wolf Whitefang Hongo, the antagonist from the first game. As a bonus, the Dreamcast version includes the classic Sega arcade game Tranquilizer Gun, and completing all the missions in Dynamite Cop unlocks unlimited plays of this retro title. Notably, the game's character Bruno Dillinger makes cameo appearances in other Sega games, including as a playable character in The House of the Dead 2 and in Project X-Zone as a solo unit character. Additionally, a nod to Sega's heritage is seen in a cameo appearance of the chicken leg creature from Golden Axe on the island stage of Dynamite Cop. Ninja Baseball Batman 1993. Ninja Baseball Batman is an unforgettable fusion of sports and arcade action, offering a wacky yet enthralling beat-em-up adventure. The game's mission is bizarre yet captivating. Four Ninja Baseball players, Captain Jose, Twin Bats Rhino, Beanball Roger and Stick Straw are tasked by the Commissioner of Baseball to recover artifacts stolen from the Baseball Hall of Fame. Each stage of the game represents different parts of the United States, offering players a tour of the nation in their quest. Up to four players can join the fray simultaneously, making it an engaging multiplayer experience. The gameplay of Ninja Baseball Batman bears similarities to IRM's earlier title Undercover Cops, with characters possessing various fighting moves that can be executed at the cost of health to eliminate all on-screen enemies. Players can engage in combos, throws and dash attacks against multiple adversaries. Unique to this game is the mechanic where players can perform more moves when the health bar flashes red, as long as they don't regain or completely lose health. The game is peppered with American and Japanese themed items for health restoration, weapons like baseballs and shurikens, and even cheerleaders who can clear the screen of enemies or provide a bounty of health items. Mini games following each boss battle add to the fun before the final showdown. Marvelous Verdict As we conclude our epic journey through the top 50 retro beat-em-ups, it's clear that these games were more than just a way to pass the time. They were a cultural phenomenon that brought friends together and created lifelong memories. From the innovative gameplay of Comic Zone to the unforgettable characters of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, each title we explored has contributed to video game history. 
these games pushed the boundaries of what was possible in their time, blending storytelling, action and art in ways that still influence game design today. As we sign off, we hope this video has rekindled your passion for these classic brawlers or introduced you to some hidden gems.